unconventional way because we are in an unconventional place. Usually the seminars of this type take place in the corporate world, in corporate buildings, in the middle of big site cities where all resources fly to. And we are here in the port of Badalona and I believe that everyone to whom I have spoken about this project asks the question, why Badalona? And I'm very pleased that we have here with us Teresa Gonzalez, who is a newly uh, part of a newly elected team uh, to lead Badalona for the next period. And this is important for us to understand that we are very local and very global at the same time. My name is Daria Tatay, and I have the honor to uh, welcome Professor Manuel Castells. So. I just decided that, you know, uh, maybe the original plan was a little bit different to start with a networking game, network thinking game. But why don't we start with listening to one of the um, greatest minds of our times. Uh, Professor Castells has been for the last 20 years number one most quoted communications scholar in the world. And in his theories, in his ideas, uh, are rooted many answers to the questions why disruption is taking place as it is today and how we can better understand the society of our time, the network society. So why don't I give the voice to Professor Castells and we will take it from there. Well, thank you very much, uh, Daria. Um, and let, let me just start, uh, not too formally, but just saying that uh, I truly appreciate the opportunity that uh, Dr. Daria Tatai gives me to uh, communicate with you and exchange some ideas about what appears to be a very important project and also give me the chance to see again several very good friends who are here. Um, and I, I would say that as, as a Catalan who has always, always been trying to uh, fight for innovation and new forms of improving the economy and the life people in Catalonia, this project has something special, uh, which uh, I think uh, could be interesting to discuss exactly what, why, how. The one real thing that has this project as special is uh, that it's an act of entrepreneurship uh, from a true entrepreneur, Daniel who uh, we were good old friends, but uh, with Daniel we met many years ago in the founding board of the European Institute of Technology, both appointed by the European Commission. And I think together we, we have been shaping the EID uh, that started exactly from ideas of uh, uh, networking, entrepreneurship, innovation, etc. So it's a, it's a pleasure and, and an honor to be here with her. And I think it's a, it's a mystery uh, <coughs> why we were able to attract her to Badalona. But please, let's make sure that she stays. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and make sure that, that, that you here in Badalona understand that it's important to attract talent. And if we talk about talent, here is talent. And I, I hope that she's not going to be discouraged as so many other talented people who tried to believe in this country and we just threw them out. Um, so they, we all do the best for, to retain you here. And in exchange you do this project. <laughs> um, I, I think we, we divided the, our uh, work here in this session and I, uh, I suggested that I would place this project, the project that she is going to present in a moment, in an analytical framework that would provide the context and the meaning uh, for really betting on its possibility. Uh, not just whatever project, it's a complicated one, but I think if we reflect in broader terms, we could see that there are some chances. Uh, in fact, the, the broader intellectual context of, of this project is in, in, in Daria's book uh, that you have around there about the new growth model for Europe. Um, but that book, and the thing <coughs> that book that emerged from our discussions in the, the EIT, uh, 
comes is also the second derivation of something else, which is the, uh, the rationale that is behind the current project in terms of the theory of um, milieu of innovation, which uh, is what could provide some new thinking, some fresh thinking, to invent, reinvent a new model of growth for Europe after the uh, financial crisis and its devastating consequences in the entire continent and also here in Spain and in Catalonia. <coughs> but I continue to believe that is nothing more practical than a good theory. Because without that, we are blind. And when we are blind, it's just a matter of lottery. What works or doesn't work, we don't have any control of that. So, to try to understand the processes that could lead to innovation, and from innovation to entrepreneurship, and from entrepreneurship to uh, sources of economic and social growth, that, I think, is a task that we could at least start together. Um, let me start with some intellectual history. Um, brief. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, in Berkeley, uh, we met with um, my friend, dear colleague, Sir Peter Hall, in 1985, I think it was, and with a, a great French economic geographer, Philippe Dallot, who died afterwards, uh, very soon after that meeting, to try to think, to provide some theoretical thinking on the experiences of what we had been studying in Silicon Valley, certainly, that was our main field of research with Peter Hall, but also in different parts of the world. And Philippe Dallot had actually developed a whole uh, research program in Europe looking at what he already at that time uh, called innovation hubs. Um, we started, uh, in fact, with uh, the theories of Alfred Marshall. So to see that things go very, very far back in history. And it's interesting that Alfred Marshall, who was one of the founders of the Cambridge Department of Economics, uh, has not been cited lately. Uh, Cambridge really had two schools of thought in economics. One, the famous one, the Keynesian one, Robinson, etc., macroeconomics. But the other uh, was the microeconomics, and it was not the companies, but was the economics of territories, the economics of districts, the theory of industrial districts. When? Well, allow me, being already biased as a professor, start in 1898. In 1898, Alfred Marshall was um, writing the following. The strength of small and medium firms, small and medium firms, in a district is provided by external economies that depend on the general organization of the trade, on the growth of knowledge and appliances common to the trade, on the development of subsidiary industries, and so on. External economies, different from internal economies generated from the companies. He systematized his theories and published in 1920 his Principles of Economics, and in which we can read that goods ideas are in a district are promptly adopted because they are in the air of the district. The air of the district. This is not a mathematical equation, but it's very operational, the air of the district. Embedded in what? They're not just pure ideas, embedded in the local <laughs> social networks. I mean 20. And he ends. If one man starts with a new idea, now we would say one woman, of course, um, <laughs> this new idea is taken <laughs> up by others and combined with suggestions on their own, and then these become the source of further new ideas. We are talking exactly about that. What with Peter and, and, and Philippe we did in 1985 was to transform this on the basis of our research on Silicon Valley and then 
around the world in a book that we published under the title Technopop of the World, we try to uh, organize all this in the idea that why and how innovation is generated. Why innovation? Because innovation is the key for non-inflationary growth. Because innovation is the source of productivity. And productivity is the source of real growth. Unlike in Spain, what we always thought that innovation, that growth, would come from some mystery that some people would invest. Well, down the line, you don't have, you have growth and no productivity, you have inflation. That, that's, you don't have to understand the economics to understand that. Um, so, what, but from there, we move to the analysis that innovation is not an individual act. It's not some genius idea. It's not some innovator. By the way, some people call it inventor. But inventor and innovator is not the same. It is the result of a material organization. It's a milieu, a milieu of innovation that is a territorial set of interactions uh, based between the constant uh, exchange between the components of any production process, which are the components of any production process. Very simple. It's, it's uh, raw materials, labor, and capital. However, what happens in our age, in our age of based on digital economics, digital technologies, this particular set of elements is in fact specified, meaning it's a specific raw material, a specific capital, and specific labor. Specific raw material, knowledge. These are the minds of our time, knowledge. What we process, what adds value is processing knowledge. And then this knowledge can be supported in anything. Can be supported in fashion, can be supported in microelectronics, can be supported in tourism, can be supported anywhere. But knowledge is what really is produced. Um, second, specific labor. Which specific labor? What the business world calls talent. And talent is not whatever. It's not simply a skill labor. It's the capacity from any worker, any employee, any any person to actually produce value because of its capacity of recombining whatever in an innovative mind. And then the specific capital. Which capital? Venture capital, as we all know. Meaning capital that risk. You know, financial capital these days, I can study this in the economic crisis, is not risk. The notion of risk, the traditional capital notion and superior notion of risk disappear. Why? Because they only play with the money of their clients. So if they win, the clients win. But if they lose, the clients lose, but the managers don't. <laughs> In fact, since their pay is based on the volume of transaction and is based on a quarterly uh, payment, they in fact, the more there is a crisis, the more they make money because the higher the volume is and the higher the rotation the turnover of capital is. So it's one of the most exciting consequences of the experience of the financial crisis. So, but venture capital is risk. And, and you know, Silicon Valley, about uh, seven out of 10 projects of venture capital fail, fail. But the one that wins, wow, it wins big. How we know that? Well, all the big companies in, in market capitalization in the world now come from the new industries. Come from the Googles, come from the Apples, come from, and in fact, the oldest companies, like Cisco, Nokia, etc., they're already in the way down because they did not keep up with the process of innovation. Even, sorry, but a friend who is here about that, but you, you know, Hewlett Packard lost the time exactly because they forgot that they forgot about innovating and innovating. And, and you know, IBM is a service company because uh, the so-called IBM computers now are called Lenovo computers. Uh, so, what is the mystery of this interaction that creates something? What is this something that is created? I'm sorry for the reminding you elementary things that I want to connect to, to this project. Is the ability to induce synergy. Synergy. That is, we have gone from economies of scale 
that was the combination economics, the economies of synergy. And synergy, as we know, is uh, two <coughs> plus two are, is five, not four. And therefore, that's the source of creation of value on the basis of this synergy. And this synergy is empirically, uh, our empirical observation show that it's the result of the interaction of a recurrent loop of connections and impacts between these elements for the production process. And that works in, the, in a territorially organized system, which is the milieu. And this milieu is the milieu of technology, like Silicon Valley, but it's a milieu of uh, finance, like Wall Street or the city of London. It's a milieu of fashion, like not Paris anymore, like Hong Kong or Tokyo. Um, it's, it's a milieu of uh, entertainment. Hollywood is exactly a milieu of production in those terms, based on networks and, and social networking. And this is the point. The process is not simply that these elements are territorially organized, but this territorial organization has one organizational form, which is the fundamental one, networking. Networking. Without networking, all the, all the rest is simply does not connect and does not produce anything. That was discovered in, the, in our modern economy. Again, Alfred Marshall already had been talking about the networks of the industrial district. But in our modern economy, was really provided in terms of the evidence by my former student Anna Saxinian, uh, today Dean of Information School at Berkeley, that discovered how the, the Silicon Valley productivity was based on the local networks between engineers on the one hand, personal networks, and firm on the other hand. And second, how Silicon Valley expanded throughout the world by linking globally to other local networks in situ, in Munich, in Bangalore, etc., etc. So the actual industry of the innovation technology is based on local milieus organizing networks linked globally to other local milieus organizing networks. Global networks linking local networks. This is the architecture of our productive world today. In economic theory, by the way, this was immediately theorized by brilliant economists from Stanford, Brian Arthur, that simply showed mathematically the economy that was behind this productivity was the theory of increasing returns to investors. Classical theory based on decreasing returns. At one point, your investment does not give you uh, as much as before, and therefore the, the, the investment decreases, but not in the high-tech industries, not in the innovative industries of whatever kind, because since every investment triggers again the virtuous circle of interaction between the different components, then it's an economy of increasing returns, completely different from the industrial economy. This is the classical model that we know of the origins and development of Silicon Valley and similar, similar milieus of innovation in the 20th century. But you know, the reason that I keep working again and again and <laughs> from the main universities in the world is that there are wonderful surprises all the time. Um, I decided, but I, I couldn't do it myself directly, but I decided in the last 10 years to explore how Silicon Valley was working now. How was working after 2008, after the, the financial crisis of 2008. And May 1st this year, my best student, is a Korean woman, uh, Nahoi Koo, uh, defended her dissertation at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles on the new Silicon Valley. And she found two things. Well, she, in, in empirical speaking, she uh, created a database of uh, thousands of startups, new startups since 2008. And uh, in addition, she did uh, Field work, interviewing, and observing all hundreds of startups. Yeah, only the young women can do that. The main result was, first of all, there was a new round of entrepreneurial uh, investment and venture capital, and the same kind, the same kind of uh, uh, dynamism was reproducing in the 21st century, except that not just 
on the traditional forms of microelectronics, software, etc. No, in everything. Most active field of investment, environment. environment. Second, education. Third, design of uh, systems of uh, thinking. In other words, everything we do, but now with the forms of technology and digital technology that were there uh, forever. But here is what her big discovery, she's going to be famous because of that. Um, she actually mapped mathematically the networks of Silver Valley in the 21st century and compared <coughs> these networks of companies, companies this, compared these networks to the networks of similar startups in the rest of the United States. So two clusters of networks, Silicon Valley networks and networks in, in the rest of the United States. In the, in the network of the United States, thousands. In the Silicon Valley, uh, network about 3,000 companies. The network in Silicon Valley are much more dense, much more active, and much more um, interactive in the components of the networks than anyone in the rest. So it's a mathematical demonstration that networking is actually the source of competitiveness and productivity on the basis of a comparative study between them. It's serious stuff in that sense. So because in the 21st century, we have moved from the semi-descriptive, semi-anthropological analysis in terms of the glory of entrepreneurs and networks and case studies and anecdotes to a systemic proof that the structure of the industry these days depends on the density, ability, dynamism, and volatility of the network. The networking form is the key for anything, for any business, for anything that happens in the world. And that's how the small and medium companies are able to thrive when major companies when there is a crisis, are shaken and have tremendous difficulty to retain themselves and to reposition themselves. And that's why Silicon Valley continues to be the most innovative in the world. That, that's why also many other similar milieus of innovation in the world, in all the industries, are capable of reprogramming themselves as the world economy changes. Well, all these ideas, although not Nahoy's idea, because it was not there yet, but all these ideas about networking, about innovation, entrepreneurship, generated by the, um, uh, basically by the uh, American experience, and I would say even by the California experience, were in fact implanted in Europe through the EIT, the European Institute of Technology. And this is not a self proclaiming glory. I wrote the paper that gave birth to the EIT at the request of President Barroso. Daria knows that, that at the time was not public, of course, and I was very discreet, but now it's history, so we can talk about everything in history. And the idea was uh, that clearly uh, the notion of creating now sort of an MIT was ridiculous. That originally was the European Commission project to create an MIT. An MIT, at this point, uh, reproducing a model of the late 19th century. No. What we have now, networking. Networking not only at the company, but anything. And that's why uh, we developed and we reflected together in the board. And this reflection was very important. The paper was the beginning, but it was many, many other things. Uh, and we created a system of networks of networks. Uh, all this is explained in a Daria's book, which retraces the origins, development, and um, the interaction of the different components of the so-called knowledge and innovation communities that were the key model of the EIT. See, by the way, Daria added an absolutely essential component that was not much to make it. It was there, but it was not really central. And that people have not thought of uh, entrepreneurship. Because ultimately, all this logic, all these networks, all these things have to be incarnated, have to be embodied in something, in an actor, some you. 
ultimately, we need economic actors. We need entrepreneurs. Without entrepreneurs, nothing happens. Financial markets are not going to innovate. We'll be innovative, uh, financial analysts innovating in the financial market. But the calculations in terms of rate of return of capital, this is not going to innovate. This is going to sometimes increase capital, sometimes destroy capital. But the actual innovation and the source of productivity and therefore of growth goes through an actor, which is the entrepreneur. And since this is the French term, I could say the entrepreneurs, uh, because more and more women uh, are, are doing that. Now, back to Badalona. You see, ultimately all this has something to do with the place where we are. Because why? Because Badalona is actually, said or not said, a subversive project that Daria Tatai has invented to create a kick. <laughs> she has created hundreds of kicks in Europe to the AIT. Now it's a matter, she said, well, uh, let's do it in Badalona, a knowledge and innovation community of the highest quality in Badalona. Why Badalona? She loves Badalona. So <laughs> what can we say? And, and that's a, really a lack. And she's betting on <laughs> And she started, uh, I mean, Miguel Marcelo was telling me, because I, I only got recruited by, by Daniel recently when I came back from California this year. But he said, well, this, this friend of yours, Daria, in a few months knows everybody, uh, which is networking, right? So it's networking of the people, networking of the resources, networking of, of everything. So the idea is how possible is or not in a place like Badalona, which she insists always is not Barcelona, is Badalona, and is not the same in every way. And this notion of the metropolitan area of Barcelona, everything is Barcelona? No. In fact, in Barcelona, they would not say that everything that is outside Barcelona is Barcelona at all. Um, example, in football, you know, the Espanol uh, the Barcelona is metropolitan. It's not, it's not from Barcelona. No, <laughs> 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 no, that would be safe. That would be safe. So clearly, it's, it's Barcelona is Barcelona. And metropolitan is metropolitan. And I don't agree with that, but uh, what I'm saying, when, when she said Badalona is different from Barcelona, I think she echoes a feeling that, that is about it. Now, Badalona is a mid sized city in the traditional sense. Of is what could be uh, the, the components? Why Badalona could or could not uh, be an experiment to develop a new team? Well, Let's go back to the theory. Let's go back. So it's not a matter of wanting or not wanting. It's a matter of bringing back the theory into the practice and the observation and trying to see what happens in terms of um, the components. Com first component, knowledge. Well, as far as I understood, and you will correct me in your presentation, uh, there is always a beginning of some knowledge applied to this place by interesting by the alumni of EIT that developed a series of projects based on their knowledge about what could be in Badalona. They applied their knowledge to a specific local setting, in those, so transferring the knowledge from their minds to the place, which is actually the way all millions of innovation ever started in the world. Silicon Valley did not grow anything in Silicon Valley was William Shockley, inventor of the transistor, who moved to Silicon Valley, and then ultimately developed the Shockley semiconductor that were the origin of all the company in Silicon Valley. And why he moved to Silicon Valley was simply because he was depressed in the East Coast. And what people do when they are depressed? They go to see Mama. <laughs> and, and Mama was living in Palo Alto. And that was an accident. There's no other explanation. All the gravitational models about location theory, no. Mama of William Shockley was living in Palo Alto. He went there, and then when he recovered from the depression, the depression that he got because all the big commerce in the, in the East Coast did not want to get his uh, technology, then he started Shockley. So my contact has actually there the story forward. Well, for whatever reason, the EIT alumni uh, 4,000 of them, 
There are 400 pl plenty of knowledge in these young minds of the uh, ESD from the uh, kick of the EIT throughout Europe. Had a, a meeting, came here, and they had a, a series of a concur of ideas to see what they could develop from their knowledge in Badalona. Well, there is some knowledge they are starting. Second, um, of course, talent. Talent. Well, there's plenty of idle talent in the area of Barcelona. Plenty of young, very good professionals, engineers, economists, designers, that either don't have a job or they are unemployed in terms of their capacity and their skills. And they would jump on the opportunity. And then, venture capital. Well, this is you, by the way. You, uh, ask yourself why you are here. You are the, the potential venture capital. So, venture capital is what is really missing here. Because this has always been the Achilles heel of all innovation in Europe. Because as I concluded my study of venture capital in Europe, venture capital in Europe, by the, the financial system here, is usually interpreted as um, venture capital is risk, or it's called risk capital, risk for you, capital for me. That's what the financial institutions say in Europe in general terms. So this is a real issue. This is the real issue. But if some conditions exist and some new mentalities of uh, entrepreneurs start springing up, then if there is venture capital, the seeds seem to be planted here in a place which is, of course, beautiful and great uh, quality of life. And there is plenty of cultural creativity. La Fura del Rauf is one of the examples of that, uh, which is Padrona as well. Um, so um, I believe that if we consider the possibilities, and we consider the existence of the beginning of entrepreneurship, Daria and others, and we consider the creation of networking and therefore of networks as the organizational form, there is a chance if different actors start their working in this place, why not? What is not possible is to reproduce the Silicon Valley of the world, because it's not that. Is the dynamics, is the networking, is the existence of these components and the ability through entrepreneurs to connect it. And this is a matter that you have to decide, the different uh, actors, economic, social, political, you have to decide. If you believe in that, you can risk on that or not. That at least has created the possibilities to think the unthinkable. Thank you. This was, this was great. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for the words towards me. It's, it's almost intimidating. Uh, you know that my brain kind of grew out of... No, 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 no. Your, no, no. I don't take any responsibility. No, the fact is that it's true. So what, what I am, what I am uh, I am this agent that is able to translate a theory into practice and uh, this surely has to do with my personal background and being part of the emerging markets of Central and Eastern Europe. And I remember how my country, my uh, part of Europe, looked 30 years ago and what it is today. And this has always um, surprised me that over one generation, and it happens to be my generation, you can really make it from being very poor <clears throat> to being kind of rich. And today, Poland is second to South Korea in terms of speed with which we uh, got to the high income countries. Uh, we managed to keep a very interesting social model with the Gini coefficient being low, meaning very high social cohesion, also very low inter-regional diversity. So Poland, which is a 38 million country, a big te territory, we are uh, kind of not very rich, 
and not very poor. We are simply very happy. We are a pretty happy society, I would say, although we like to complain. Uh, and I must say that I feel fantastic in, in Catalonia, especially as I understand that you're being called Polacos. So I feel... <laughs> so I understand that now people talk about me, la Polaca de Badalona, or la Polonesa de Badalona. La Polonesa de Badalona. And, um, you know, when you look at the world, what I have learned from Professor Castells is that now when I look at a person, at an organization or at a city, what I see is a network. And this kind of changes uh, your capacity to act and, and capacity to create value. And this has all been theorized in my book, which was inspired by the EIT experience. It's not a book about the EIT and the kicks. So kicks are just one manifestation of the theory that Professor Castells developed of the society. And then we were taking it step by step and applying to a reality. And I know that you're very busy people and you probably will not have time to read my book. So, um, we have, so I have prepared a uh, network thinking game for you. Okay, how about translating a research into a small game? And I have here with me um, uh, partners from Naked Innovations, Iana, Laurie, and Brian. Wave your hands. So why don't we take a short, a short interactive game? And if I can ask you, Jan, Jan, there are ten copies on purpose, not enough for everyone. So you need to cluster into ten groups. And if you can do it just now, I would like to take you through my book in ten minutes, just that you experience what is network thinking and how you create value in the network society. Okay, so um, 10 copies, we have more people than copies, so we need to create a little network. Oh yes, in a way, I educate people. Because it's, it's not that I'm a university professor, but I have those people in my work and I need to coach them. So I'm actually <coughs> part of education. And then you discover that after all, to understand something, I need to go and do some research, even if I'm not a researcher. <coughs> because the world is changing so much that nobody gave you enough knowledge to advance in your everyday work, work task. <coughs> so, um, I would be surprised that you decide that actually a single person wears different hats. And this is what is happening in reality, that organization I get getting hybridized. We're not one or another. We're this and that as individual and as organizations. Now, um, but still, you know, uh, organizationally we function in, in, in silos. And this is why we don't get this accumulation, this economy of synergies, as Professor Castells was saying. So now the, round, the end of round one will end with you making a little pitch in what way your team can create your network, your network that you have just created, can deliver value. If you can just come up with one example that you have in your network, a DNA, a DNA of this model, which is basically one picture summarizing uh, my book in the top right corner. The DNA, the chip that enables the growth models of every organization in the network economy, I believe, a generic DNA, something that is able to create, to interact all this.
and I'm just here with this fantastic group, and we basically are able to build an empire. Um, so <laughs> our strong foundation is very academic because we have a lot of people working in academics with us. We build um, an infrastructure that shapes new minds and creates a new mindset with students that will then enter the labor market to become entrepreneurs that help again to shape a new society. And we have a pair here who actually will support that with infrastructure in terms of uh, the government and what the city can provide and possibly, and we like hearing that, funds as well because that is super important, right? And then we have Karina here on my side who is a fantastic interaction designer amongst many other things and has great entrepreneurial spirit. And she can actually build platforms um, build a platform that will make all of this information accessible for the broad public. So then can I uh, come into the game where I can actually help sell this idea so we get more and more people and supporters to conquer the world. And this is what we do. <laughs> And well, I think that in, in the steps of the working of this, of this uh, game, I think that probably I am the, the most uh, concentrated, the most a multitask men, women. And I think that uh, well, for me, it's, it's not uh, my my personal experience. This is not um, it's not uh, something that there's few different channels for for going in this way. It's something natural. First, I was to start my, my company, my own company, 17 years ago, and, and then uh, I was to, to uh, develop my, my professional career in, in, in the way to, to improve my skills in the, in the digital marketing and, uh, and in, in programming. And then the, the next step was to, to reinforce my linking with, uh, with the universities. First, we yes. I was developing a, a degree in, 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 the, in the business school, then uh, opening to, to a, a small medium association of businessmen here in, in Catalonia, that is PIMEC, it's one of the biggest here in our country. And actually, well, I, I, I invest my time in, in, in all of these fields, but for me it's very easy because these are very, very linked one with the other, and also in this way, is 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 my connection with you in in, the, in this in this field because we meet in the uh, you're a half, and probably this kind of thinking is 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 the way that you are like to develop this. Well, thank you very much. So it's all about uh, looking into the industry. So we have a HP here and understanding what are the challenges that we need to resolve to kind of take a step change into um, get into their company uh, and giving those feeding those to the talent that we host at universities. So we representing the university. Uh, so there are lots of fresh ideas that need mentoring, that need investment. And in nurturing, so we have Albert, he has all the money, <laughs> all the investment to see you know, how, we, how we actually develop those ideas and grow them. But they will get to him before counting on the network of mentors that uh, the organization that Francis is part of, which is the Mobile World Capital, you know, full of uh, failed and successful entrepreneurs that can share their experience with the, with the new talent that is. Being developed at the university, so so we have the we have the investment, we have the mentors, the expertise, we have the talent with the ideas, and then we have an audience. Uh, so HP could potentially adopt their ideas if they are aligned with their business model, or they could go by themselves outside the company if they have the merit. Marta, thank you for that. Was, that was we were at the beginning, but then we introduced ourselves. And what we see here is that uh, we are uh, policy makers. So we put the arm to the government and then policy makers we try to innovate in terms of new policies making it happen, everything happen as possible. And then we have a couple also representative, actually three representatives of a uh, systems of uh, 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 a high education system that creates a uh, data system of innovation, which is a study, which is a uh, uh, detail for the campus beyond resource and it is MIT. So this, uh, uh, our um, added value as a network, since we have uh, been working together before and we know a little bit uh, what, what are our capabilities, we think that we can transform the environment. 
with the good policies, with the, with the right policies to make it happen, as we said, and then our value, our value will be impact, societal impact. Now, so what we really want to do, you, we, we want to interconnect you into an open system architecture. Right? If you stay as you are, you're very influential, powerful, you can do great things. But imagine what can happen if you start to communicate, if you start to co-create, to collaborate. And this is lesson number two from the book, that uh, open architecture, open system architecture, are much more powerful in terms of creating new value models, new growth models, than any closed system. And lesson number three is the following that your growth model for the network economy um, has basically, if you were to measure your success, you know, a simple way to, to do it is accumulation. Accumulation of what are the resources valued today. And Professor Castell said it in the beginning in his lecture. Number one is knowledge. And knowledge today is basically data. It's access to information. Uh, and to, to, to a capacity to frame the data into meaning. Number two is the talent. So it's basically who can you work with, what kind of talent you can start to collaborate with. And number three is funding. And interestingly, venture funding, it's a minute part of all investment go going into high-risk projects. Today, you have so much European funding that starts to think in a very different way than before, di that diverts from, from grant thinking, from subsidy thinking. The whole EIT model and the KICS is about impact investment. And it's fair to say that we're all learning. It's easily uh, said but difficult to do to change the ecosystem and put people on the common ground how to create value. But this is being done in Europe. It's reality. They have created um, thousands of jobs. There are thousands of students in the system. And these students are the real value. Uh, so lesson number three is that you can think of yourself as a network here in Barcelona or Barcelona. You can think of yourself as a uh, network of Europe. And in this picture on the middle of the bottom, you have basically the collocation centers of the KICS and the shadow structure of the regional innovation centers, which tries to induce the mid-sized cities, the places that are not at the top front of innovation. Uh, but then really, you know, it's a global game. Everybody can go, you know, wherever, wherever you, you can. And, and sometimes it starts with a single person moving from one place to another. And we never know who will move you into your neighborhood and how this person will change your neighborhood. And this is basically the whole, and now you don't need to read the book. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> okay, so if this is the theory, this is how I interpreted the theory into a little game, and we can develop it, and, and I'm very thrilled that Naked Innovations want to work with us on, on having this network thinking game spread out and help people understand why certain people make it, brutally speaking, and others don't. Simply to teach people. It's a skill. Network thinking is a skill. You can learn it. Everyone can learn it. But let me come back to the question, why Badalona and why we are here? For those of you who do, do not know us, uh, we are a Polish company, um, and we're building our presence uh, here in Spain. We're a strategy and investment firm. We invest our own funds, but we rather co-invest with others, and we rather create investable projects and change the reality. Basically, we do real estate transformation. We search always for interesting investable projects and we help fundraise, whether it's a fund of, fund of funds that we match with, a, uh, with, with uh, a venture capital team that wants to raise the um, uh, money or whether we uh, invest uh, in an idea. And today, you know, money is important, but what is more important in this network thinking, in the network economy, is actually who you collaborate with. Who can give you endorsement? Who can shorten the distance that, that is between you and the resources you need to get? So it's basically, who are you in this network? And you're defined by the trust you have, by the, by the brand you have, by uh, who you are, how are you listened to. And in the book, there is an interesting chapter on the power of networks. How do you build your power? And again, I own uh, so much to... Manuel Castells, and, and the, one of my favorite of his books is The Communication Power. And 
all I, what I do, I translate his theory into you know building the value. <laughs> but I I think that reading the book would be fascinating, and then. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just one way to interpret his theories. Now, why Badalona? We don't have time now, but on our website there is a movie that we have created, and I was thrilled that Immanuel Sanz, the director of the port, when he saw the movie, he, sa he said that it's fantastic. And then people from Ayuntamiento of Badalona thought, yes, this is a different vision for who we want to be. And it is a dream vision of an outsider coming to see Badalona in a Barcelona metropolitan area as, as uh, a place that used to be 200 years ago a glorious past called the Catalan Manchester, the second most industrialized part of the world. And I was born in such a city as Badalona in the south of Poland in Silesia, in the city called Lucena, we know in a city called Zabrze, which is basically a coal mining city. Not the same. Yeah. <laughs> no, not the same. Not the same, but we also have a lot of post-industrial spaces, polygonos, and people are trying to reinvent the future of these polygonos. And which uh, is, is, is a great example how this can be done at the very world level. Um, so I invite you to watch the film, uh, but actually the film shows a place that we're creating in Badalona, on Badalona Beach, uh, right at the Pont del Petrol. It's a tiny place, but the network behind the place is pretty, pretty global. Uh, and this is the way we think of, our, of us as a creative lab, because really what matters is that our unique value proposition is that we propose a process. I believe that based on the research in the book, we understand pretty well uh, how value is created today and we're able to communicate, to teach, to learn together how to accelerate these processes. So our value is to accelerate the development of innovation districts, and Badalona for us is our, don't get me wrong, it's our playground. It's beautiful, and we believe Badalona deserves a better future, we believe we can help, but Badalona is not our object. Uh, there are dozens of mid sized cities around the world, and our process can help all these cities uh, lead them, assist them through change. Because our mission is to work with mid-sized cities. I believe that um, today the whole attention goes to those mega cities. But really what matters, people you know, have their own identity. And if we talk about engaging citizens and, and driving change for the better world, maybe mid-sized cities have more personality, have more connection to the local heritage and tradition to really have the courage and the guts and the passion to change the neighborhoods where, where they live. And we want to work with dozens of cities. It's not about Badalona again. It's about the world. We are a global project. Now, how we want to do it? Now, you already know how, right? Because you experienced this. Uh, this is our growth model. This is the book. You also have it. Uh, the book was launched uh, in many places, most recently in Dubai. I was very pleased to see great interest uh, in the Middle East. And uh, the game is a prototype. We want to translate this game into a massive open source training that will help people you know, embrace this reality and make it innovations are here. And another team is in Poland working with us on it. You know the game now, but what is it all about? Why are we in Badalona? So we had this idea of opening a creative lab on the beach because of lifestyle, midlife crisis, and so on. Um, and early this year, the EIT alumni asked us to sponsor their startup days at Hackathon. We told them that we work with mid-sized cities, and if they are interested, they can try to think how to reinvent Badalona, and this was their mission. In Europe today, there's a lot of talk about missions, because this will be a new a way Europeans want to give more direction and more speed, accelerate how public money going into research and invest in innovation are being invested. We're not talking about the grants or subsidies, although in fact this is public money redistributed. But the way you do it, you know, can change a lot of things. And um, after this one day of hackathon, and Victor uh, was there with, with, with them, uh, unfortunately, I had a car accident and I could not be there. Uh, but and Joseph Piquet was, was there as well from La Salle. Um, they came up with five projects. And what we're doing now, what you're part of now, is how to see to what extent any of these projects or any other project that will evolve out of these original ideas can transform this metropolitan zone. What are these five projects? 
Well, number one is a bridge to China. Badalona has, is the largest cluster of 600 Chinese firms. And I'm very happy that Marta is with us. She will be one of the speakers uh, and representing a university that majority of students are Asian. Uh, I believe that this will give us a good perspective. Project number, and, 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 and alumni thought that create a cultural center for, for collaborating, uh, for understanding cultural misunderstandings how to bridge European and Asian cultures. Uh, number two is Badalona 4.0, so create an artificial intelligence living lab. And we're looking for partners who would like to adopt this team and work with them, to what extent taking the capacity that the EIT have, and EIT alumni have. And don't forget, it's not about people, it's about the network. They are part of the most powerful knowledge and innovation network in Europe today. <laughs> okay, so you're getting direct access to the best laboratories Europe has, private and university labs. You're getting access to the top investors Europe has. So don't think of them as individual. Think, think of them, what kind of net network, what kind of access you're getting. And by the way, I've talked with the um, uh, Barcelona Supercomputing Center and they basically said that they're in, that they want to adopt this project and be one of the partners taking this project further. Project number three is a neutral and eco-friendly village in the heart of Catalonia. Catalonia. And Miguel Barceló is probably the best person who will speak later to refer to this, uh, how the, the polygonos here could become a template for a sustainable habitat, for a new type of living where you have good education, good jobs, and at the same time you experiment how people really want to live and, and, and work. We live in crazy times. This is not sustainable what we do. It's, it's pure exploitation. Maybe there are better ways for our children. Pico Bao is my favorite team because they want to create a, a surfing paradise on our beach. I would love to have artificial reef and being a member of the Badalona Club Natacio, I think that, you know, uh, I would surely surf more <laughs> than I do now if there was an artificial reef. And, you know, and they make a real case saying that, um, uh, that actually when you have the surfing culture arise, growth goes up, higher quality jobs go up. They, they really made a, made a, 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 a um, case. And then you have Open Social Lab that basically wants to create a 3D print hub and maker space in Badalona to engage citizens, to help them, you know, experiment and learn in this new reality. Um, and I had a great talk with, with Artur Serra and, and also with Jeb Taradas. You know, that these new ways of living and working and re-industrialization re can really change a lot. So there are five projects and you are now part of an experiment to approximate from an idea in March to July where we actually have an innovation retreat with the people who designed it. And if you want to play with us and have Badalona at your playground to learn with us, we would be delighted to, to, to do it with you. And let me give you one example which is kind of surprising and always very inspirational. So, so this model, right? Um, now, we have this entrepreneur in the middle. And it always fascinates me when, when reality validates the model. So, Laura, I hope you don't, will not feel intimidated if everybody will look at you now. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> so, so, Laurie is actually the only person who was at this uh, hackathon in March, out of the whole uh, EIT alumni. But the interesting thing is that he's not an EIT alumni. <laughs> okay. So, you know, in the network reality, there is reality, the network thinking, in, in network economy, there is always this amazing ingredient of unpredictability that you have a person, an agent, the entrepreneur, the iconic entrepreneur of the digital age, you know, for some reason, for some interest, happened to be there, worked with the EIT alumni, because it was an open event. Anyone could come who, who it, you don't need to be an EIT alumni to be part of the EIT startup days, right? It's an open model. So he was there. And out of this whole crowd, you know, uh, he's here with us. And he's co-creating and taking this further. I think it's fascinating. But I should also have that we have three kicks with us. Lucena Wojniak will have a voice in a second um, from Wuch is on the board of the EIT Health. 
She's a vice rector of the medical university. And by the way, an author of a very influential report called LAMI Report about the future of Europe Fab Lab app. You have the link in the agenda. It's really worth reading where Europe should move to. And we have two people, two persons on uh, on the on the Skype on the on the video conference with us from the Climate Health uh, Climate Kick, which is the first CEO Mary Ritter, also my very dear colleague, and um, we have a person from. Uh, EIT uh, yeah. from from the Inner Energy from Eindhoven, the person and her name is Lucien Cross. So just that you know, you know that you have today this reality that you see, this networked reality that you see, and you have this digital reality that you don't see. Okay, so I don't know what will happen, but it's fun to be part of it anyway. Now, let's go to work. And I, preparing for this work, I asked some people to, some guests, some participants, to prepare contextualized questions. What I mean by a contextualized question is a short intervention referring to what Professor Manuel uh, Castell said, to this specific case of Badalona and our, uh, and our process how to accelerate transformation of mid-sized cities, and then refer it to her or his interests you know, why is this interesting? What could we do together in Badalona, for Badalona, or, you know, for the world? Uh, uh, it's it's a very interesting uh, idea that Daria came, uh, let's say, a few months ago. And I decided immediately that it could be a wonderful opportunity to, fun, to further uh, improve the way we are thinking about innovation. We are thinking about innovation. We started a few years ago um, when uh, decided that there are tens of universities around and tens of medical universities around. And each of these universities offers more or less the same standard education. So, uh, when I became responsive for research and uh, international collaboration, I started thinking uh, about finding something that can be very specific for us, but also that can build up a network of institutions thinking in the same way, not only the universities. And uh, we decided at the time that uh, aging population is one of the major challenges that the world has to face now. And this, was, this is also one of the, major, the most important challenges that the city of Łódź has, because our demographic situation is even much more difficult than average European and average Polish. To solve uh, some of the problems, some of these challenges, we needed networking. And uh, some of ideas we had were not immediately clear for most of the community we operate within, that's for sure. Because, uh, you know, uh, when you are at the medical university, everybody is asking how many doctors you will graduate every year. And this is the major problem. Uh, but we decided that uh, medical university can be also innovation hub. Innovation for solutions that has to be, have to be delivered to the community, to the society. And to do this, we need three things. We need wonderful, good collaborators coming from industry and coming from other universities but also we have to rebuild from the very beginning, from scratches, collaboration with citizens, with some, somebody that our colleagues from organizations, structures, uh, and users. Uh, because uh, we create uh, innovation, we wanted to create innovation for people, but we really did not understand their perception. So this is 
we decided to collaborate with universities, with companies, with local government and citizens. To build it up, we created a, a university of the third year, uh, third age. In Poland, it is a very, very popular uh, approach to activate citizens, elderly citizens. Uh, they are so strong that they really look at, at our parliament to change uh, some regulations at the moment. So uh, we started working with them. But uh, to do this, to do this, we need money. One can't do anything without proper funding. And this is the question I want to raise. How to use European funds? How to use uh, uh, money that is available on the market? How to build up synergy in using this money uh, within single organization, local networks, within cities and countries? Because uh, we think, and I, I, I do believe, that synergy of funds, a better alignment of the money that is available on both regional, national and international European level or global level, this money has to be disseminated in much more effective way. And for this, we need to build up networks. Because uh, when I started uh, collaborating, uh, when I, well, you know, I, I was invited to the LAMI group, uh, we started a discussion about simplification of the system. Uh, why it was important? Because most of us, one of the, uh, the, the LAMI report is built into 12 points. And synergy of fund, uh, I'm very glad to say, found uh, a very important place in this. So uh, coming here, I want to ask the question whether this kind of uh, project can be also transformed to better use, more efficient use of alumni. Alumni are army of young people with huge potential and completely new capacities. Because I can observe our alumni from our workshops, from our boot camps, whatever. And they, after several days, they are changing. They get this spirit of entrepreneurship. So why don't we use them in a structured way to increase capacity to increase efficiency and to uh, stop multiplying and uh, uh, building every time from scratches. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Daria asked me why uh, we are here. Okay, and I'm trying to share with you why, why we are here. Okay. Basically for three reasons. The first reason is because we have a dream, and one of our dreams is to convert the full coast of Barcelona area from Castelldefels to Mataró in a knowledge coast. And this can be another piece of the puzzle. And we have the campus in, in Castelldefels, we have all the area of Porvell uh, with Pier 01, etc. We have all the city of the area. Uh, we have the PRBB and the UPF campus. We have uh, campus diagonal Besos, and maybe here we have something uh, in the future. Uh, I speak about just the coast. Of course, if you go over the inner, uh, we have a lot of more things, okay? Because just here, here we have Canruti and, and other research areas here in Barcelona. And we finish in in Mataró, Technocampus Mataró. So we have a real, a real option to a full knowledge cost. The reason is because we demonstrated worldwide that 
we are a very powerful research system. And data provides, uh, data supports this opinion. As I always say, uh, one of the fathers of, of big data, Edward Ewings, always say that if you don't have data, you just have another opinion. So uh, we have data that demonstrate that we are one of the poles of research, at least in the south of Europe, or probably in Europe. And we are now in the process to transform uh, all this research into, into real innovation. We did a lot of things. Right? We are in this process, but I think this kind of initiatives can help to accelerate the, the process. Uh, this is the, the second reason. And the third reason is something very interesting that probably after we can discuss with Professor Castells. And I try to make understandable my point of view. I think one of the best, uh, sorry, one of the worst uh, problems we had in the past probably not just Barcelona, Barcelona and other areas in the world, was just to try to copy Silicon Valley model. I think Silicon Valley model is very good for Silicon Valley. But we need our model. We need a model that fits with our way of thinking, our way of looking to the life, our way to relationship with people, and so on and so on. Of course, there are things that are, are the same. The, the, the background eh, or the, the basement can be the same, but we are different, we are very different than people in California, and you know better than, than nobody. And in my opinion, in our opinion, because this is something we, we, we share with a lot of people in our system, our key point related to innovation must be social innovation. So we need to look for social value of innovation, not for return on investment. Return on investment is just a means, it's not an end. And in the same way that in Barcelona it's much, much, much more difficult to find a venture capitalist that invest one million dollars in Barcelona, it's much more easier than, in San Francisco, than here than in San Francisco to find people that for nothing help to other people to do things. For example, all of you know, if not I remember you, that the number of volunteers that helped in the Olympic Games in Barcelona 92 has been the higher in Olympic Games history. This, this kind of way of thinking, of way of, of behave, is, is what we, we need to, to impulse and to, to, to help. So three things, the cost of knowledge, the acceleration in this research innovation transformation, and this uh, social aspect of innovation. These are the three points that we, we want to to, to push you, and we think that this initiative can help, and we can help the initiative. Thank you. We believe that the, the increase of change that we will see in the next 15 or 20 years is going to be like what we have seen in the past maybe 200 years. I don't pick me from the numbers, but you understand the most, right? So, to do this, we, we have done this, this whole exercise to look at what happened around us on different areas, uh, in the social area, in the technology, in the industry, in the globalization. And we came with uh, four areas that we call megatrends, for the lack of a better name. Uh, megatrends in the global organization, you know, people concentrating, concentrating in big cities, um, generating more consumer requirements, social requirements, health requirements. We are looking also at the what we call the hyper-globalization. Used to, there was a nice book, I like it always, that was called The World is Flat. So this is now, you know, you can buy anywhere, you can, you, you don't know what you are buying, you're not walking, or you get lots of things at home without moving. So this is another important trend for us in all the aspects, professionally and consumer. The, the other one is the change in demographics. You know, the, we have an aging population, we have a new generation, what is called the Generation Z, that has a completely different attitude to how they consume, what they want, what the social values are. And last but not least uh, is the, what we call the accelerated innovation. Right? If I want to focus on this one, 
for it's one one example that is out of what we are doing, but will impact all of us is what we call the the butterfly effect of the self uh, driving cars, right? It's not going to be an impact of self driving cars of the car industry only, because now you have a lot of people commuting that at plenty of time. You have a lot of cars that are connected, and you can manage the traffic, right? So this is examples of uh, what uh, you can do with technology, with information at all levels, and this will change in In our case, we are focusing in different areas. One of them, as Daria mentioned before, is uh, additive manufacturing. This is an area to really increase the way we are looking at it, is to increase productivity, very linked with, uh, with Professor Castell was saying, increase productivity, uh, reduce waste, reduce stocks, reduce, uh, you know, um, a way of manufacturing that generates uh, pollution and other type of uh, uh, problems that we have in this society and we tend to be in this stuff. No? Uh, we are working on, um, on textile uh, printing, but textile, not to do what the industry of textiles is doing, but to this job. So, at the end, uh, what we are looking is at making changes with new technologies into the proven processes, and to do this, we have started uh, a couple of years ago doing some, uh, using some methodology that uh, is called ExoSprings to generate ideas. We have seen how uh, much we can get out of our people when we put them in an environment where they can represent their function or their company, just generating ideas. And then the other thing that links very well with what you are doing is tapping into the knowledge, wherever the knowledge is. Okay, so I mean, today you can access anybody anywhere in 24 hours. <coughs> and this is the two things that I see that uh, having talented people, putting them in the right environment, and getting access to all the knowledge that is around the world, and many different organizations, from the universities to other companies, uh, makes a big change. And we are seeing uh, very accelerated innovation in the last couple of years. Thank you very much. And uh, we start, so uh, he started explaining us about the, her experience on KIT and EITs and so on and so on. And in one moment, as Katia Rekal asked us to help her networking in Barcelona. So in a moment, I, I asked her, where, where is your office? And I was... Uh, Waiting that she could say, Oh, you have 20 plus, or I'm in Gabonal somewhere. And she said, We are in front of Pont del Patron. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say Badalona, she didn't say Pont del Patron. So I said, So you are in Badalona? I'm in a project in Badalona. So from that moment, we start sharing our common projects in Badalona. Uh, our approach was different. Well, by the way, uh, after a few weeks, it was necessary to introduce her to anybody because she knew everybody. So anytime I asked her to say, do you know that? Do you know that? Yes, I know. Yes, I know. So uh, now it's not, it's not necessary to not work anymore. Uh, anyway, about, about Barcelona, uh, and there are some people here that is very involved with the project. Hello, Fran. Hello, Jose Maria. Uh, hello, Victor. Um, we start to, uh, two years ago, about two years ago, to the test, more or less, uh, defining uh, what it could be an innovation district in Badalona. But not in Badalona, but in the industrial area in front of the sea, in front of the beach, actually. <coughs> That is, as you know, Badalona is a, is a city of about 200,000 people, and in the north there is an industrial area. Badalona is a non industrial area coming from the 19th century. So there is an industrial culture, there is an industrial tradition, there is an entrepreneurial capacity here in Badalona. And in the south we have about 65, 000, 65 hectares, and in the north, uh, near 35. So we have around 100 hectares of industrial area. And as you know, in the whole metropolitan area, that is about 10,000 hectares, uh, most of those hectares are in a degradation process. 
there is no investment, whether public investment or private investment. So uh, this could be something bad, but it could be also an opportunity, an opportunity to build in this area the new city, the new 21st century city that is going to be quite different than the old industrial city. Why? Because the old industrial city has an urban planning model that is spreading and specializing the areas. I mean, the industrial areas are all together outside the city. But the new economic activities go into the city because the talent want to be into the city. So the question is, how we can, in the next, in the coming years, transform this, so uh, we could say the, the invisible city, the invisible part of the city, because nobody goes there except the workers. Nobody goes there, but are, are in the center of the city. These 100 hectares are in the center of the city. So the question is, what we can do connecting urban planning, urban model uh, infrastructures with a knowledge structure how we can transform those two areas into the new 21st city. So from that, and with a, with a strong relation with the, with the municipality and with the enterprises, the Association de Empresas de Badalona, Associación de Empresas de Badalona, we define a project that uh, the main elements are the following. First of all, the main criteria is to integrate in a system we need a systemic approach because the new city is a complex system. So we, we, uh, we have to understand this complex city from a systemic approach, integrating the urban planning with the economic strategy. They, they must go together. And this, uh, this doesn't, doesn't happen quite uh, usually because organizations specialize in different departments. But we have to manage together. So there is a challenge of the new of a new governance. We have to manage the uh, urban planning and all refer with urban planning. Uh, so what some people from Brookings Institution ask uh, speak about uh, physical assets. We have to manage the physical assets in coordination with the soft strategy. That means the industrial strategy the knowledge strategy, the research and innovation strategy. So from that new approach, it comes a project that had some singularities. The first singularity is that in a place where it has been just a specializing industry, must, must, co uh, must, uh, must coexist uh, different economic activities with residential, with services, with uh, education, with infrastructures, etc., etc. So we can, we must define a new um, we must define a new uh, urban planning strategy. Beside that, one of the challenges of of, uh, of Barcelona is that in a different way than 22 at in 22 at uh, 200 hectares there were not much industry. There were very few industry. It was an abandoned space. No? So uh, we could transform everything into offices buildings. In this, in this land just over here, uh, there is competitive industry. There is mechanical industry, very international competitive. So the channels we have, how can we coexist in a, in a, in a space uh, that we, we are able to potential the, the existing industry just beside advanced services, just beside activities like uh, uh, industries culturales and creative, creative and cultural industry represented here by Fran and the Fuero dels Baus. You mentioned the Fuero dels Baus, I introduce you the Fuero dels Baus. So, uh, what we find out is that in, in, in Badalona there is a competitive industry mostly related with me, uh, metal mechanic and related with chemical pharma, but beside that there is an emerging, a powerful emerging sector 
related with creative and cultural, in, uh, in cultural activities. So the challenge is how, in a place, we can make compatible both industry, and this is new, both industry and cultural activities. So we, are, we start, for instance, in a building called Mueve Rojas, where La Fura del Gau has been installed, and just beside Mueve Rojas, there is an industry, a, mecha a powerful mechanical industry. And just beside will be services, and just beside will be residential, and just beside will be public, public soil, public space for uh, the interaction of the people. That's where, what we are trying to do in Badalona with other innovations like uh, the take the opportunity of transforming such a big piece of land in an, in an urban environment, uh, trying uh, to take advantage of the possibility right now of a project of uh, uh, I would say, uh, an energy transition project. I mean, if we are going to transform 100 hectares of, of uh, urban area, we have the opportunity to initiate processes of energy transforming uh, because uh, technologies and power plants are uh, mostly related with solar energy. Okay? So this is another, and finally, the the last innovation thing we try to introduce in that project is social innovation. Taking advantage of some of the, of the most experience that I imagine Arthur Serra will explain, like the one of uh, City Lab in Cornellà, that can be introduced in that, in that space. Uh, considering that just beside this uh, polygon industrial, is a quarter called San Rock, for instance, that is one of the most degraded, socially degraded quarter in the metropolitan area. So we have the opportunity to connect a growing potential, an economic growing potential, with connecting with a social problem, connecting with innovation, uh, uh, social innovation initiative like the, uh, the like the City Lab, like that, as uh, Artur used to say, is not city with Y, is city with E. It's not city, but it's citizens. The citizens are the lot for citizens. So that is, as a summary, what we are trying to do. And a new challenge is how to, uh, we could connect this process that is levered by, by the municipality with the support of the, of the, of the companies, how we can connect with your projects, with your initiative that come out for a different way. But I think that some of the, pro of the five projects you, uh, you mentioned have, can have a, a positive connection among them, and that's our, our work, our job to do in the coming weeks. Okay? RMIT is one of the largest institutions, uh, institutions in Australia. We have 87,000 uh, students. 87,000 80, 87, 87, students. Yeah. Um, we have uh, internationalization is at the heart of the University of DNA. We're a university of technique. And we want to be an enterprise. That's how we define ourselves. We have three campuses in Melbourne, two in Vietnam. Um, and we also teach in Singapore and currently opening campuses in, uh, in Jakarta and also in India. So very, very international outlook. And I run the European uh, hub of the University of Barcelona. We're based in the Twenty Two Lab at uh, Mediatic Buildings. So I just learned that I have a neighbor next to me. <laughs> and um, yeah, before, like Dara said, before I joined RMIT, I was working uh, at our part of the London office, I was head of uh, research there. And Dara was asking me to bring to the conversation of today a little bit of the uh, built environment perspective. So we've been talking about different elements of the innovation districts. So, you know, we all know that a well-planned, uh, livable and connected districts are central to attract entrepreneurs, to attract talent and to attract uh, investment. So if I think about what are the key success factors, again, from a built environment perspective, to get these thriving spaces, there are two, two main things. One is the, the quality of the space, 
and two is the accessibility through infrastructure. So if we think about the quality of the space, what I mean is the public realm, and I love how you put it, is the, the ideas are in the air. Exactly, so not in the high-tech labs, not in the car parts. They are outside in the streets. So we should be thinking about the quality of the streets, the quality of the open space. Um, so, so that's uh, cause, cause that's really where you realize the benefits of clustering. So I would say, you know, in the context of uh, Badalona, one of my questions was how to encourage the municipality to have a vision for long-term investment in the public realm, into quality public realm that is enabling this clustering activity. So that is one one thing. The other thing, as I mentioned, is infrastructure, and it's uh, infrastructure that enables accessibility. Uh, and the business case for infrastructure is built out of density. Urban density is what creates a business case to invest in better public transport, for example. So if you have more density, people can actually be in spaces where they can work, they can learn, they can play, uh, all nearby. That means they can actually walk to places, they can cycle, uh, they can better use public transport. So that in turn uh, generates better health, uh, lower investment in, in social care, and more attractive places to live, which in turn brings return on investment for, for developers. Uh, so those are the, the main two things that I wanted to mention from the built environment perspective. Now from, from RMIT, we're actually involved, not just as an academic institution, but also as a, as a real estate owner in two, the development of two innovation districts. One is uh, in Cambridge, next to the well-known uh, science park. We have one of our adjunct professors uh, who runs an urban planning office in London, working on the innovation district in Cambridge with uh, Grove North. And we had them over actually with Miguel Barcelo in our office a couple of years ago, just learning about the 22 ad model and uh, what could they take from that into, into Cambridge. So that's one, <clears throat> the one that is closer to home, as in our home, is the Melbourne Innovation District. Um, and this is a, a very big initiative. And just to give you the context of Melbourne so you get an idea, of what we're dealing with. Um, the city of Melbourne is growing at a rate of 150,000 people per year. It's massive growth. A lot of it is in the back of, of, of immigration. So, you know, the infrastructure is just catching up with the unprecedented growth. Uh, so that's one. The, 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 the city council has a very strong appetite of making sure that they do integrated urban renewal. So that's really the top of their agenda. And there is also a, a massive investment on infrastructure. So at the moment, um, the state of Victoria is building the Melbourne Metro Line. It's $11 billion of investment for, for a Metro Line that connects the city north to, north to south. So in the middle of all of these, uh, RMIT University has made a partnership with the city of Melbourne and uh, with the University of Melbourne for us to work together on developing the innovation agenda for, for the city. Uh, and for us as an academic institution, it's not only about the fact that we are you know, having now access to amazing and fascinating projects for our students and for our professors, but it's also giving an opportunity to add value to the real estate investments that we've already done. So recently there was a pedestrianized street that runs through the middle of campus, $200 million of investment from the university. You know, we're already seeing the value of that going up because we are in the midst of this innovation district in Melbourne. And it's revaluing also the, the assets that the university already have. Um, and of course, putting us in the limelight of being a contributor to the dialogue of urban innovation and how these innovation districts can contribute to the growth of the economy. So, so my question uh, after all of this is, uh, is really to how can we best connect these international initiatives, you know, to create what you were referring to as the network of networks, you know. We have, uh, we have had the city of Melbourne coming to visit uh, Barcelona. Uh, now I'll take them to visit Badalona in due course, uh, <laughs> hopefully. And we had David Martinez, the current director of 22Ad, also visiting Melbourne. You know, just exchanging lessons learned and so on, but it's, it's a bit of a journey. So how can we accelerate this learning from each other and, and building on the lessons learned? Uh, 
And this is interesting that if Silicon Valley has not convinced the American people <coughs> that to spread this Silicon Valley model to the whole country, uh, on the contrary, if you have a country divided between the high tech people in the coast, but the people in Ohio voting Trump, Ohio, as you know, is the, the people that represent a little bit the medium American, then we have a problem. We need to reinvent the model. Not only we cannot copy Silicon Valley, but we need to invent a new model. And this is uh, where anthropologists that work normally with cultures outside of the Western civilization, they call it primitive culture, can help a little bit to understand the work of community. And this is very important for Europe because Europe suffered two world wars to begin to realize that we need something called universal systems. This is what we invented. Education and healthcare are universal systems. The Americans don't have universal systems, we have it. Because in one point in our history, we realized that we need to unite communities. We cannot live in a permanent world between one part of society against the other part of the society. And this is what we are suggesting with the idea of Citizens Lab, that we need to open a kind of universal innovation systems. Of course, it's, we are supporting these innovation districts in some parts of the city. But how about the rest of the city? How about of the rest of Barcelona that is not living in this wonderful port? Do we have an alternative for them? Or they will put in against this kind of innovation district? Because we have now, after the post-crisis of the 2008, we are not in the 90s. We are, we are in 2018. And from now on, we want to answer this question. How to combine the excellence with the innovation inclusion? Remember, the OCD last report is about no growth, but inclusive growth. Because this is the problem now developed countries are discovering. How to solve the, the division of our societies in the high-tech people and the rest that they are not benefiting from this high-tech. And then this is why we are, we, well, we, uh, of course, we, we saw networks, because I'm, I'm an internet guy. But the problem is not the network, is what is the organization you put over the networks, over the internet, that people can create values. And then we discovered the world of labs. Labs. In the 90s, the keyword was net. Now the keyword is labs. Fab labs, living labs, city labs, policy labs, health labs. Everyone is looking for creating value, not just connecting, not just creating networks. You need to create added value networks, knowledge networks. And not for a minority of the people, but for the full society. And this is a little bit the, the Cornelia model we are developing. A city as a living lab. A city as an inclusive and excellent living lab. That you can combine excellence, but also inclusion. I put an example. Every year, all the students in high school in this Catalonia country should develop a research work. The official research community are totally unknown because they have no connection formally between the official high-tech labs, for example mine, and these students. But with the city lab of Cornellà, we are linking both. We are connecting the high-tech in the CERCA centers with the living labs and with the students in the high school in Cornellà that is looking for a project research project that could also solve some problems in their city. In that way, we are beginning to create a universal research community in Catalonia that links the people in the schools doing projects, the living labs, the city labs, and the high tech. And this is our contribution to your, <laughs> please do not repeat only the industrial district, now called innovation districts, because it's not enough. Simply, it's not enough. One part of society will buy it, or the part of society will not benefit, and they vote. And if they vote, and they are majority, then we finish the innovation district in nothing, because they will destroy it. And this is the question is, can we possibly build a new model for European one, after the lesson of our two world wars, repeat, <laughs> that we can create an inclusive society? My point is universal innovation systems. 
Universal Labs, created an integration between the excellence and all the people that are now, are now innovators, citizens, and scientists, and they can be in the same community. And I find how to, we are inspired in the health system. The health system now in Catalonia, in Europe, is universal. How do you organize that? Very simple. You have a card that allows you to go, not to a high level hospital, no, to your primary healthcare center that you have in your neighborhood. If the people there cannot solve your problem, they, they send you to the intermediate hospital that they can help you. And if they cannot, you go to a high level specialized hospital. This is a hierarchical networking system to develop your health problem. This is a personal health system. You, we need this kind of innovation of personal health system to train your talent, not only to bring in the innovation talents worldwide to here, but otherwise we're bottom up the endogenous, what we call it national policy, endogenous innovation talent. And, and that's it. Thank you very much. You all of you, we were talking about this balance between social value and economical value. Each of one of you, we talk about that in a different manner. And, um, and I think that can be a big basis for that project to go, to work. Um, the values of Silicon Valley, I will not criticize them, but they are quite specific. And they all share that values. That's why Silicon Valley works quite well. I think one of the challenges we have here, and my question will be, we need to be differential, we need to really create that new city that is going to be together with the big city, of course, to be big. And we need to create this, this new network of value. And to do it, we need to define clearly which are going to be our values that will drive everything and all our efforts. The second thing I was thinking today when I was, when I was hearing you is what I can, how we can contribute. We have a consultancy, we work with big corporations, 30% on in the US market, a lot in Switzerland because we work a lot in, for healthcare, um, and also we have um, offices in Latin, Latin America. Then when I was thinking what I can do, because I am not super rich, or I'm super rich, but I think we can contribute on, you know, everything you could, um, you could need in terms of bridging corporates with your initiatives. It can be in terms of funding, and can be in terms of making a real change in terms of impacting, impacting in a bigger scale. And I think, you know, the projects you define there are a very, very good, good start. You know, I love artificial intelligence <laughs> myself because I really believe in the value to, to, find, um, to find that magic between humans and data. To find, um, you know, innovation and great ideas are in the middle of humans and technology, humans and data. No one is approaching, and not so many people is approaching creativity with data, data with, you know, I think finding in that uh, areas, in each of these one, how we can do something different that bring a big value, take into account this double equation, I think can, make, can be a, a, good, a good area to explore to bring, you know, to, uh, to this initiative to be really remarkable in terms of bringing value to the world. And I will say that um, in that moment that Catalonia is suffering internationally from, uh, you know, let's say what well, everyone is suffering, you know, Trump, the English, they have Brexit. We have this Catalonia thing, like it's not, uh, sometimes it makes us difficult to, to win. Um, I think it's, uh, this initiative is, uh, can be also an opportunity to build from Catalonia this, uh, you know, this new way of networking with values that are related with our European way of seeing the life and with values that are different and can drive to a different path of growth if we can work all together. And then, you know, um, just um, 
fascinating with this initiative, I say it again, and I think I can, if I can contribute, come with us, and I hope every one of you um, are coming because we really share the same, you know, same of way of seeing value. All right, thank you very much. Connectivity at the end of the day is networking. Uh, and this key aspect is, uh, I would say, one of uh, the universal uh, boundary conditions that you have to have. Uh, I think this is about networks, but I really think this is about people. So the right leadership with the right people, you can really do big, big things. It's very impressive to see the amount of forward thinking that is going on and that Daria has been articulating today. I think the potential is tremendous and I would be very happy to to consider, you know, opening up to opening up to Badalona and getting engaged in some of the initiatives that are being considered and represented today. People have to build uh, uh, proper relations. They have to build trust. They have to know each other very well uh, to complement and to execute uh, uh, different uh, uh, areas of the project. To my background, obviously, we're doing design thinking, so I try to follow the process a bit about how to, you know, go from looking at the kind of empathizing with what's going on in Barcelona, and then looking at the challenges going on, and then going through the process, then ideating around it, trying to understand. Um, kind of try to come up with as many crazy ideas, normal ideas as possible to try and think about how we could how, how we could make that load into this cool, different uh, avant-garde city that was, you know, leading the charge against climate change. Well, challenges are everywhere. I mean, you just, what you have to do is to listen, to listen what are the needs of the, of, the, of society, uh, to listen, you see those young creative people that are around, that have beautiful ideas, and then, well, technology is a source of innovation. Yeah. <laughs> I think innovation is a strategy and investment plan. We work with cities, we help cities build innovation districts. And our unique value proposition is the process to accelerate the transformation of post industrial sites into innovation districts or to build new urban areas with a new way of thinking how to create an urban space that can accumulate top talented people, investors, uh, and emerging ground for entrepreneurs to create successful companies.